Hey you, I'm Sarah Turner. I am a copywriter and copywriting mentor, and I'm still trying to figure out if I can pull off animal print. Let's let's do this together, shall we? All right, let's talk about how to write better copy and seven tips that won't make you feel sleazy. Because honestly, that was my biggest hesitation to being a copywriter. I didn't want to be a sleaze ball. I didn't want to be like every digital marketing representative I saw out there. Representative. You know what I mean. The guys in the like black t-shirts with their Lambos. I just, I don't know, just didn't, didn't rub me the right way. So I was always concerned about, I liked the idea of selling things that I believed in, of helping brands that were, you know, making a difference in the world succeed. But I really struggled with the idea of just selling to sell. That was not my jam. So these are some of the best ways that you can improve your copy but not feel sleazy because I know it was very important for me. So if you're here, it might be important for you too. So first things first, use real success stories and take the time to really flesh them out. Case studies are a great way to do this. They're helpful because you get a chance to really dig deep into somebody's story and pull out the tidbits that, you know, your reader will probably relate to. So using real success stories helps you, you know, tell stories because storytelling is a great component of a good copy. And, you know, you're telling a, a real story. But don't forget to leave out the parts that aren't perfect, right? So even if there are parts of the story where it's like they didn't use this part of the product or this thing wasn't necessary for them or, you know, whatever it is, that's part of the, like, story. And people will feel more trusting of you if you just tell them like it is, if you're just really straightforward. So I really want to encourage you to not, like, you know, curate the story or overly polish it to where it is just like an absolute glowing testimonial or case study. Because sometimes those little things that weren't quite right, that's like how, you know, most things work, especially when they're engaging, many people are engaging with a product or service. They're not all going to have the same experience, right? How many times have you like gone and looked at reviews and you believe the reviews more when you can find a realistic negative re review or two, right? I know I'm that way. Anyway, so the second thing is call yourself out. This is one of my favorite things to do in copy. If you are starting to type out, you know, you're writing your copy, you're writing copy, and all of a sudden you think to yourself, wow, this sounds too good to be true, right? And you're kind of maybe getting to that point where you're grossing yourself out. You're like, this is too good to be true. <laughs> call it out. Just say, Sounds like it's too good to be true. I get it. I kind of went a little over the top there, didn't I? I mean, I, I didn't mean to toot my own horn. You know what I mean? Make fun of yourself a little bit. Call yourself out. You know, if you are thinking this is what, like, this might be too good be, to be true, or maybe I'm being a little over the top, you know, if you're thinking that, your audience and the people reading your copy are definitely thinking that. So the best thing to do is to just call it out. It doesn't mean you need to like completely eliminate it. Sometimes it actually can work in your favor. Um, but it also can be really fun because it, you know, shows them that you're real, you're authentic, you're genuine, and you're not just kind of over the top using, you know, sleazy sale tactics without, you know, any sort of uh, conscience. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is use real and specific numbers. So saying hundreds, saying thousands, I'm actually a little guilty of this. Saying hundreds and thousands um, is not as good as using an actual number. For me, when it comes to some of my copy, the numbers are changing so dramatically that I do sometimes say hundreds or thousands. Um, but if you can put in a real number, it's going to be so much more believable. The other thing is, is keep in mind, sometimes when you use a number that is too high, even if it's the truth, people have a hard time believing you. For example, there is a YouTube video actually where I think I say making $3,000 a month for blogging. I mean, if you've taken my free course, you know that actually I was making over $8,000 a month for, for blogging when I first started out. And then I transitioned to other types of copy and was earning around the 20K mark from copywriting. The reason I don't make YouTube videos about that is because 
for a lot of people, it's just not believable. It's not believable that that is actually achievable. And even though they are real and honest numbers, I know that. I know that somebody seeing my YouTube videos for the first time are probably not going to believe those numbers. So keep that in mind as well. When you're using real and specific numbers, it might be okay if you use an earlier number from when you your business first got started, got started or from when a product or service was first you know, being launched or whatever. Just use your best judgment here. But keep in mind, real and specific numbers are so much more believable and keep that whole thing in mind about it being too big, right? The next one is don't use douchey language. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. So many times people come either from a formal background or they think that by using elevated formal language, they're going to sound smarter, more impressive, more believable, more trustworthy, but really it usually just repels your audience. But here's the thing, you really got to know your audience here, right? So some audiences will be more receptive to this than others, right? But some, and honestly, probably most, really just want you to talk to them like a human. So try to refrain from using like oh, being overly verbose and ostentatious and, you know, just, just keep it real. Just keep it real. The next one is build rapport. What I mean by that is empathize with them. Take the time to build credibility. And remember, credibility doesn't necessarily need to be boasting credentials, you know, sharing um, data and numbers. Um, You can actually build rapport and credibility really effectively if you can just show that you share an experience, that you have a commonality in your humanity. That is often so much more powerful. So you can empathize this with with them, you know, touch on their emotions, use their lingo, right? If you are using specific lingo to them, and again, this isn't jargon, we're differentiating between the two. Um, If you use lingo that is specific to them and their problems or struggles or something like that, uh, that is going to be really powerful in establishing credibility and building rapport with your audience. This is one of the reasons I'm such a big believer in having a niche because this is going to be a lot easier if you're writing to similar audiences. The other thing though is make sure when you've been writing in a niche for a while that you don't get so, like you don't get to a place where you think that you know what they sound like um, or the lingo that they use, make sure you're always staying curious and you're always asking questions. Cause I've definitely surprised myself a time or two when maybe I sent out a survey or yeah, surveys are a great way to do that. Or asked a question in a Facebook group and the responses have often surprised me when I got comfortable and thought I knew my niche, you know, I came to find that, you know, they're ever changing. So keep all of that in mind. The next one is to be bold. Be bold in your asks, be bold in the way that you speak, speak with confidence and take out passive language. Hemingway app is a great way to take out um, you know, passive voice and replace it with active voice. And it's definitely important that you are bold in your call to action. You have to make it so clear for the person that this is what you want them to do next. So be bold, don't soften your asks. I actually have said this before, but this is in one way that copywriting has, I think, made my life better because I used to just soften my asks in my personal life. I'd be like, oh, maybe if you could like, please, Uh, Maybe if you had time, you could help me with this thing. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, it's an exaggeration, but I pretty much, that's how I would say things when I wanted to ask a friend or family member for some help. Now, I am much more straightforward, still polite, but much more straightforward. I'm like, hey, when you have a chance, could you please help me with this thing? I mean, it's something that I think tends to be a little bit more of a problem for women. Uh, That's just been what I have witnessed. But be bold. Try and push yourself to say, like, I I will, like, I'm going to, this is going to help you rather than this might help you or this could help you. Obviously, within the, staying in the realm of being honest. Anyway, that's one I obviously feel very passionate about. Um, And then the next one is, tackling objections. I love objections. Objections are a great way to, you know, 
build more credibility to kind of get in their mind and show them like, I know, I get it. I know what you're thinking, right? So tackling objections is just a fantastic strategy that, you know, helps you persuade and sail without feeling sleazy. And one of my favorite ways to tackle objections is in a a frequently asked question section, because that way you can just like write out all those objections in a line and go right into addressing them. So, These are the seven ways, some of my favorite ways, to make my writing more persuasive without feeling sleazy. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you have your own techniques, if you are gonna use these, let me know. I would love to hear your experience with them. I have a feeling it'll help your copy flow a little better. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? And uh, yeah, hit that thumbs up button if you like this. That's how I know you wanna see more things like this. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have a wonderful day, guys.